praise God. We're together again, and I never want to take for granted this privilege of you and I connecting and especially having the Holy Spirit here with us, right? We never want to take for granted our access to the precious Holy Spirit. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us, to pay for our sins and bringing us back into the family. And Jesus so perfectly said in John, in the book of John, that he would send the comfort of the Holy Spirit on assignment, our advocate, our standby, our strengthener, the one that would reveal the secrets and mysteries of God, your word, into our hearts. We believe we receive his help right now in Jesus' precious name. Let's get busy. We're in Live Life Strong, part four. Out of the box, out of the box, part four. We gotta get out of the box. Look, God wants to speak to you today. He wants to communicate secrets of life for your life. Too often, man-made ideas put distance between your heart and God's thoughts for you. They're things so simple that they can be summed up as boxes, man-made rudimentary boxes. For just a moment, I want you to think of the ways that God has spoken to individuals throughout history. And as you do, think of this. Keep in mind that God is no respecter of persons. What's that mean? It means that God's communication with you should be just as life-changing. He wants that for you. Think of this. In Exodus 3, God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush saying, I am who I am. In Genesis 6, God spoke to Noah and instructed him how to build this gigantic boat and ark to save all of humanity. At 75 years old, Abraham hears God say, leave your home and travel to where I will greatly bless you. In Job's trial, God speaks this transforming life out of the whirlwind and transforms him from weakness into great strength. In 1 Kings 19, Elijah the prophet hears God speak with a still, small voice in the wilderness, transforms his life. Ruth, she leaves her Moabite roots and her family to follow God, love God, and his people. The apostle John, he gets the revelation vision from Jesus in exile on the Isle of Patmos. Paul the apostle, he has his life transformed by Jesus on the road to Damascus. Gideon, he's fearful, he's a loser until the Lord calls him mighty warrior where in a hiding place. David was prepared to kill a giant out in the wilderness all alone with God one-on-one. -on -one. Daniel, he prayed to God alone, goes into the lion's den alone with God, comes out victorious with God. The Blessed Virgin Mary, she's alone and receives a word by the angel that she will conceive and bear a son who shall be called Jesus. Often Jesus himself would separate from his disciples to go by himself and pray one-on-one -on -one with God. Why am I pointing out these popular Bible stories and the significance of these people hearing God alone? Why does this matter to you and me? Because we want to build on our discovery in part three that to live life strong, you must mount up with wings like an eagle. This segment is no less important and is called Out of the Box. All these individuals just mentioned are live life strong people. They spread their wings and refuse the mental box of human limitation and ritual. They all thrived out of the box. That's what eagles do, my friend. Boxes and chicken coops are for barnyard thinkers. Even events like the Oscars, the Emmys, and the Grammys are designed to recycle worship and adulation for the worldly box of self-promotion and ego. Jesus promoted an out-of-box lifestyle, even with our faith and our prayers. Look at Matthew 6, verses 5 and 6. Jesus said, Also, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by the people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward in full already. But when you pray, go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. Why do you think religious activity is littered with so many unanswered prayers? Too many people in boxes praying box prayers and having more faith and being noticed by other people than by God. 
Just one big box of mental obstruction hindering the loving work of God. God lifts us up on eagle's wings. Isaiah 40 verse 31 tells us that we draw upward closer to God as we mount up with wings as an eagle, not like a chicken, but like an eagle. Scarlett Johansson, the famous actress, she once said this. She said, chickens scare me. I don't like them. They seem a little floppy or something. <laughs> well, she's right. That's why they need some sort of box, right? Today's the day God wants you out of the box. There's no doubt that it's God's will for you to live life strong. You may feel weak right now. You might have fallen, made terrible mistakes and sinned. Maybe you're in pain right now and sick. Or yesterday you signed the divorce papers and you just feel like a punching bag mentally, emotionally, and physically. God wants you strong. But even that can be such a painful realization when you're so very weak. Don't give up. God doesn't diagnose the problem without supplying the answer, the solution. He's the redeemer, the healer, the provider. And if you dare give him access to your thinking, he will redeem the real estate of your mind. God's kingdom fits in the vast landscape of your inner reality. And when you authorize that, he begins to shape your outer reality for good and blessing. This is all for you. And it starts with your thinking. In part three of this series, we got the Bible agenda from Isaiah 40 that we are to live like an eagle, not like a chicken, but like an eagle. There's too much chicken ideology floating around in progressive Christianity. We've got too many people calling themselves Christians looking for a barnyard. Chickens love the group think of barnyard gatherings and pecking at the worthless feed of poultry living. But that's not living like an eagle, is it? If you're weak, discouraged, not growing, but rather fading, then you can do the math. You're not getting the Isaiah 40 verse 31 effect, are you? It says that they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Don't beat yourself up right now or condemn yourself. Don't blame God either if you're weak. Any eagle picking around a barnyard like a hen is going to feel weak, look weak, grow weak, and eventually fade to nothing. You were made, you were made to be strong, period to live life strong. You're not made for chicken theology. Don't look for a group of hens to congregate with. I spoke with a young worship leader the other day, so discouraged and just struggling, but he said he loved ministry. I told him, instead of loving ministry, why don't you love God and love one another, just like Jesus said to do. Eagles don't get strong loving events and barnyard experiences. When eagles pursue God, they go higher and higher and higher. They get stronger and stronger. They rise up. Now that's destiny. That's the identity where you live life strong. Let's take a look again at Ephesians 6 verse 10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Now you see, this is out of the box thinking and living. Society and religion put boxes of experience that they demand you attend to, but the box ends up taking priority over you, over your life. Your family gets called to serve the box instead of being encouraged to be strong in the Lord, to draw your strength from his boundless might. God's calling each one of us to be strong in the Lord, not in the barnyard of another event or a conference, there's nothing wrong with gatherings, folks. Listen, but if we export our personal relationship with God to a box across town, then we also export our empowerment in Christ and all the strength which his boundless might provides. You don't want that. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to live without God's abiding life and strength on the inside of you? Faith makes real what feelings don't feel. Barnyard ideology is the mental construct that keeps eagles from their destiny. Who can live beyond the boundaries of their thinking? The answer, no one, no one. Chicken coop religion keeps you locked out of your true identity. Your thinking is mastered by a box. 
The golden eagle, which is usually the eagle referred to in the Bible, it can fly up to 200 miles an hour. Now, barnyards and boxes aren't for speed. They're for picking and pecking. If you find yourself needy of a box in another barnyard, you should be asking yourself, have I ever truly flown? Maybe you've never felt the wind of God's presence lifting your wings. And I'm not talking about sensory feelings either. I'm talking about the faith perception that translates into results, outcomes, growth, and yes, elevation. First Peter 5 verse 6 makes it clear that God wants to exalt you, lift you up. Remember, Moses' destiny turned on after speaking to the Lord one-on-one. -on -one. No to the box. Elijah went up against 850 false prophets alone with God. 200 miles an hour, no box. Joseph went alone into slavery. He went alone into the prison, then to the palace, out of the box with God. Samson was not alone when chicken theology trapped him into a mental box and stole his identity, his honor. And that's how he lost his hair. He lost his eyes, his strength, and his honor with barnyard thinking. The Bible's full of examples of individuals called by God who have extraordinary life-changing intersections with God, but it's not in the box of man's barnyard thinking. It's eagle environment, high winds, adversity, but golden eagle playground kind of context, right? My friend, just because you've never flown doesn't mean that you cannot fly. But mark this warning. It will not happen in the barnyard, in a box. You're called to live life strong. Being part of the crowd tends to fool people into thinking that they're growing the right way because the crowd's never wrong, right? Right? <laughs> Three young Jewish men refused to bow to a golden statue when a king and the law said, hey, you all have to bow. They refused. They refused the box ideology and they became, each one of them, great, great leaders. Get out of the box or your wings will never touch their true destiny. Get out of the box. If you think the next conference or gathering is going to change your life, then you're not truly understanding the manufacturer's standard for your design. Look at this, Proverbs 17, verse three. The refining pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries the hearts. You're God's workmanship, Ephesians says, and elimination is essential to your creation. Gold is purified in the furnace like great steel is forged in the fire. Look, good events are fine, they're fine. They can be fun, uplifting, but they don't make real steel. You don't chase identity. You submit to God's work in your life. If the furnace is for gold, then solitary intense training is for champion eagles. Joe Lewis, the heavyweight champion for almost 12 years, is considered one of the greatest boxers of all time. He said this, a champion does not become a champion in the ring. He's merely recognized in the ring. His becoming happens during his daily routine. Wow, you're not destined to be a chicken, but an eagle. Think like an eagle, not like a hen. The crowd or the gathering doesn't make you. It can't make you. The fire of God's presence in the crucible, that's what molds you. Neil Armstrong, the first person ever to walk on the moon, said when the Apollo 11 landed, here's what he said. He said, the eagle has landed. No, he didn't say the turkeys landed. He didn't say the chickens are here. <laughs> the eagle has landed. That doesn't mean that there isn't a time for being with like-minded people, gathering together and harmonizing in faith. But Jesus set that bar at Matthew 18, 19, if two or three will agree. If two or three, not two or three hundred, two or three thousand, but two or three people. In the box thinking gets so distracted with chicken coop numbers that we lose sight of eagle out of the box results. It's championship results that we want. David and Goliath, Daniel in the lion's den, Joseph out of the prison into the palace results. That's not a chicken laying, hen praying, group social potluck. Iran has the fastest growing Christian movement on earth right now. That's because the intense resistance only sustains eagle Christians soaring on the winds of adversity 
and not saved socialistic grace hens critiquing the comfort of the straw. You don't need a conference when you live in a conference with Jesus 24-7. So is the box a bad thing? Of course not. Of course not. Parameters, boundaries, borders are meant to serve you. A door is meant to work for you, but the moment it tries to keep you from your destiny, it's out of order, contrary to God's will. The invention of the box, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. When I go to Costco and purchase a bunch of items, they often ask me, sir, would you like a box? Well, of course I would. It makes carrying all those things easier. Then I discard it into the recycle bin. Boxes are great for carrying, grouping, organizing, moving things from here to there. But boxes were never meant to master your life. They're meant to serve you. But you don't serve the box. Boxes aren't even good at managing growth because they're not dynamic, responsive to movement. Growth will always beget movement. You're called to move. Acts 17 verse 28 says, In Him we live, move, and have our being. Eagle living requires movement. You can't even go 20 miles an hour in a box. Religion gravitates toward box thinking, box rituals, traditions of governance to master people's behavior. But God said that he would write his laws upon the table of our heart. Yes, he puts his instinct for living, moving, and being in us so that we can live life strong. Chickens fit in a box. Eagles soar into the sky. Whatever you do, don't fall for the lie, the lie that you need box theology to be strong. The box of the barnyard thinking is not a safe place for you. Just look around. Look at all the marriages failing in the box. Look at all the bad habits ruling people's lives. There's only temporary peace, not abiding peace. Box religion is full of prayers, but rarely answers. Jesus once said that the word of God was made of no effect through men's traditions. Like I said, the box is not a safe place for you and me. If God's word doesn't work through barnyard theology, get out of that restrictive thinking. Some leaders are tempted to use the box mindset to control and manipulate people so they can achieve participation in their agenda, plans, and events. Instead of leaning into God's character to lead by example, they resort to prioritizing the box, a program, a system, a ritual to force a form of spiritual devotion. Man's rules instead of God's rights. The law demanding instead of grace supplying. Dr. Miles Monroe, the late pastor, author, great leadership speaker, he had a term for this. He called it sophisticated dictatorship. Is this ringing a bell? Does it sound familiar? The demand to sacrifice for the box, and still at the end of the day, nobody's moving, nothing's growing, and the next generation says, forget it, you guys. I'll find my own box that suits me better. That's why there are movements like the de-churched and a resurgence of traditional orthodoxy. The basic idea is this. No kid wants the box they see their parents or grandparents stuck in, failing to move or grow. They want a life out of the box. And unfortunately, they just bounce into another mental construct. Led by their offenses, they jump into another box of rituals and call it freedom. But it's not. As Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth, the truth will set you free. Here's the truth about boxes, whether it's a mental construct or an actual building. Boxes don't make you free. You exchange God's power to fly for chicken feed. Boxes cannot retain God's presence. King Solomon split the kingdom thinking that he could house God in a box. He didn't understand God's instruction to his father, David. You see, David told Nathan the prophet that he wanted to build a house for God better than the tabernacle design that God had given Moses. Nathan said, go for it. But then God corrected the prophet and he went back to David. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. He said, go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, shall you build me a house in which to dwell? Now see, this is a rhetorical question from God and God's saying, you understand this is ridiculous, right? You're going to build me a house? Then verse six, for I have not dwelt in a house since I brought the Israelites out of Egypt to this day, but have moved about with a tent for my dwelling. Basically, God is referring to what's called the tabernacle. 
a portable meeting place that he gave Moses specific designs for. Six and a half chapters, to be exact, of design. It was a portable structure to meet with man in the Old Testament before the better covenant or a more perfect covenant, Hebrews talks about, could be ratified. David confuses God's term house as being man-made instead of a legacy and a family built by God of spiritual stones with Jesus as the chief cornerstone. You got to understand this. This is so important to understand. The apostle Stephen in the book of Acts confirms this just before the religious mob executes him for daring to state the truth about their box. Listen to what he says just before they go nuts and execute him. This is in Acts 8, starting at verse 47. But it was Solomon who built a house for him, for God. Say box. Solomon built God a box. Verse 48. However, the Most High does not dwell in houses and temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth the footstool for my feet. What kind of house can you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place in which I can rest? Was it not my hand that made all these things? You stubborn and stiff-necked people, still heathen, you are always actively resisting the Holy Spirit. As your forefathers were, so you are and so you do. You see, Stephen recounts the stories of Abraham to Moses to King David, and the mob didn't say a word. They were quiet. No interruptions. But the moment Stephen disqualifies their box, they go absolutely crazy and they murder him. Mobs and activists, they have their religion and they cannot tolerate their box being tested or challenged. It's their whole world. It's their religion. It's their hope. We have some ideologues in education right now that consider it blasphemy if you touch their religion called Common Core or CRT. Some professors in universities, they've built their worldview around doctrines like DEI and anti-Semitism. It's a box, a mental construct that's anti-truth. And so a generation gets taught to hate freedom. Here's God's answer to box ideology and why you were never meant to exist in a box. 1 Corinthians 3.9 For we are fellow workmen, joint promoters, laborers together with and for God. You are God's garden and vineyard and field under cultivation. You are God's building. If God doesn't fit in a box, what are you doing there? You are God's field and God's building. He lives in you and not in some box or ritual or brick and mortar. God's presence must be portable in your life. Think of it. God moved with the children of Israel in the wilderness, and that was old covenant. Now God takes it to a whole new level because we can be built into his family. 1 Peter 2, verses 4 and 5. Come to him, to that living stone which men tried and threw away, but which is chosen. Come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. A spiritual house is legacy, family, royal lineage. That's not a box talk, but legacy talk. You're of the house of the eagle, warrior prince. That's how you live life strong. God doesn't get intimidated when you spread your wings. Eagle movement glorifies God. Look at 1 Corinthians 6.19. Do you know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You're not your own. You see, boxes are not for royal sons and daughters of God. That's why you'll always feel like you need to get recharged, encouraged, lifted up again after submitting to a box. God's calling us to get out of the box and fly like an eagle. Paul the Apostle said this to some misled religious box people, Acts 17, verse 24. He said, The God who produced and formed the world and all things in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in handmade shrines. Ask yourself, where does God desire to live? See, this is key to your life and being able to live life strong. Where does the living God abide and dwell? Where does he transfer all of his power, inheritance of blessing, gifts, and royal privileges to? I can tell you this, it ain't a box, honey. As fast as you can, get out of that ritualistic religious orthodoxy mindset and check this out. 1 John 4, verse 15. Anyone who confesses, acknowledge, owns that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides, lives, makes his home in him, and he abides, lives, makes his home in God. Now, that's not box theology, my friend. Get out of the box. 
be free, be united with the character of God and his family in Christ, in power, in authority, fly in love, in grace, in truth, and in your true identity. But for the love of everything that's live life strong, get out of the box today. For the sake of God's love and all the world around you that needs you to be free, get out of the box. You may be struggling with shame today, get out of the box. If you're struggling with guilt, get out of the box. If you're struggling with bad habits, addiction, it's a mental construct, get out of the box. It's contrary to your design and destiny. Your wings don't fit. Eagles can't survive in a box. Do you wanna live life strong? Repent of your thinking. Be wrong and be wrong fast. Maybe your mental construct is a, is a trust in money or stuff or your talent, government or education. It could be an ideology that's rooted in socialism, Marxism, anarchy or hedonism. But either way, it's an old, tired box that's been reused and recycled for thousands of years. It's a trap. The enemy of your soul is terrified of you spreading your wings. The devil has no power over you when you decide to imitate God. He doesn't mind you praying just as long as you stay in the box. As long as you trust in a barnyard theology and feed on chicken seed. That way you never truly employ your dominion and authority for life in Christ Jesus. As long as you submit to Christian hen activity and you're just okay with no outcome, your marriage will stay broken. But hey, you've got your trusty box, right? No a thousand times no. There's no doubt about it. You were made to live life strong. That's always been God's plan for your life, to live life strong like an eagle. But eagles need space, sky, a chance to spread their wings and fly. Don't be seduced by the false promise of safety that the man-made box seems to offer. You don't hide from the wind, you ride on the wind, on the winds of adversity. Yes, it's time to get out of the box, move toward the sound of God's voice right now, and live life strong. I'd like to pray for you. Father God, your plan was never just to save us from sin and destruction, but you always planned to restore us to the heights of your glory. You've called us to be renewed in our thinking as children of yours, children of God with all the family benefits. We can't bring that old, broke-down thinking into your kingdom. The world offers man-made boxes of ritual, religion, and form, but Jesus called us to seek first the kingdom of God. That's where spiritual eagles can soar without limits. Help us, Father God, to break free from the false comfort of former things, traditions, and the boxes that censor our faith. We don't need the ritual box that promotes human approval when we can live in you and in your approval. Lift us up, lift us up as we submit to you, Father God, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.